the biological explanation emphasizes the role of inherited factors and dysfunctional brain activity in the development of schizophrenia. There are two parts to this. Part 2. The Dopamine Hypothesis and Neural Correlates The Dopamine Hypothesis Neurotransmitters are fast chemical messengers that travel between neurons, brain cells, by crossing the synapse. They bind themselves to receptors on the next neuron and pass in their message in the form of a small electric charge. Dopamine is an important neurotransmitter that regulates mood and attention. It seems to be linked to schizophrenia in a number of ways. The dopamine hypothesis was proposed by Arvid Carlson and suggests that schizophrenia is caused by too much dopamine, or too many dopamine receptors, in key areas of the brain. The original dopamine hypothesis stated that schizophrenia suffered from an excessive amount of dopamine. This causes the neurons that use dopamine to fire too often and transmit too many messages. An excess of the neurotransmitter dopamine is associated with the positive symptoms of schizophrenia. Evidence for this comes from that fact that a group of drugs called amphetamines increase the amounts of dopamine. They are known as dopamine agonists. Large doses of amphetamine given to people with no history of psychological disorders produce behavior which is very similar to paranoid schizophrenia. Small doses given to people already suffering from schizophrenia tends to worsen their symptoms. Another example is a drug called L-DOPA. L-DOPA is taken by people with Parkinson's to raise their dopamine level and has been found to cause development of schizophrenic type symptoms. However, it is now thought that, instead of producing too much dopamine, Schizophrenics actually just have an abnormally high number of D2 receptors, resulting in more dopamine binding and more neurons firing. Drugs that are dopamine antagonists are therefore used to combat the positive symptoms of schizophrenia by blocking the activity of dopamine. These drugs reduce activity in the neural pathways of the brain that use dopamine as a neurotransmitter, thus eliminating hallucinations and delusions. Evaluation The dopamine hypothesis is supported by the success of some drug treatments. In 2013, a psychologist called LEUCHT carried out a meta-analysis of 212 studies that analyzed the effectiveness of different antipsychotic drugs compared with a placebo. The drugs tested were significantly more effective than a placebo in the treatment of positive and negative symptoms. This seems to support the role of dopamine in schizophrenia, as if the underlying theory about dopamine was incorrect, antipsychotic drugs, which block D2 receptors, would have little to no effect. However the drugs do not work for everyone. Noll, 2009, argues that antipsychotic drugs don't alleviate hallucinations and delusions for one-third of patients. Also, in some people, hallucinations and delusions are present despite normal dopamine levels and blocking the D2 receptors therefore has little or no effect. This suggests that, rather than dopamine being the sole cause of positive symptoms, other neurotransmitters may also produce the symptoms. Although stimulant drugs like cocaine and amphetamine which increase dopamine levels have been shown to induce schizophrenic episodes, they also affect many other neurotransmitters than dopamine. Also, evidence for dopamine concentrations in post-mortem brain tissue has been negative or inconclusive. Other confounding sources of dopamine release, such as stress and smoking, have rarely been considered. Evidence for the dopamine hypothesis is inconclusive. The idea that the symptoms of schizophrenia are just caused by the overactivity of the dopaminergic system is therefore not fully supported by current evidence. Instead, other neurotransmitters may also be involved. Neural correlates. Examinations of the brain, mainly most mortem, after death 
have revealed a few differences between the brains of normal individuals and those with schizophrenia. These differences mainly occur in the larger size of their ventricles, having an impaired prefrontal cortex, a different shape's hippocampus, reductions in the volume of grey matter and reduced myelination of white matter. We will go through these one by one. Ventricles Research has shown that people with schizophrenia have abnormally large ventricles in the brain, particularly in those displaying negative symptoms. However, this is not true for all people with schizophrenia. Ventricles are fluid-filled cavities, holes filled with cerebrospinal fluid, in the brain that supply nutrients and remove waste. Enlarged ventricles are thought to be a consequence of nearby parts of the brain not developing properly or being damaged. This means that the brains of schizophrenics are lighter than normal. The ventricles of a person with schizophrenia are on average about 15% bigger than normal according to research by Torrey in 2002. Schizophrenics have a reduced volume of grey matter in their brain, especially in the temporal and frontal lobes. In 2014, Cannon found individuals at a high clinical risk who converted to schizophrenia showed a steeper rate of grey matter loss and their brain ventricles expanded more over time compared to those who did not convert to schizophrenia. The prefrontal cortex, main area of the brain involved in planning, reasoning, judgment, has also been shown to be impaired in schizophrenia patients. It's been hypothesis that the cognitive symptoms of schizophrenia result from deficits within the prefrontal cortex and its connections to other parts of the brain, particularly the hippocampus. The hippocampus, a part of the brain found in the temporal lobe, is anatomically different in schizophrenia patients. Deficits in the nerve connections between the hippocampus and prefrontal cortex correlate with degree of working memory impairments. Memory impairment is a central cognitive impairment in people with schizophrenia. And, finally, white matter. Research has found reduced myelination of white matter pathways in schizophrenics. White matter is the paler tissue of the brain and spinal cord consisting mainly of nerve fibers with their myelin sheaths. This reduction in myelination is particularly evident in neural pathways between the prefrontal cortex and hippocampus. Evaluation Supporting evidence for the brain structure explanation comes from Sudath. He used MI, magnetic resonance imaging, to obtain pictures of the brain structure of monozygotic, identical, twins in which one twin was schizophrenic. The schizophrenic twin generally had more enlarged ventricles and a reduced anterior hypothalamus. The differences were so large the schizophrenic twins could be easily identified from the brain images in 12 out of 15 pairs. This suggests that there is wider academic credibility for enlarged ventricles determining the likelihood of schizophrenia developing. Further support for the significance of grey matter deficits comes from a 2012 meta-analysis by Vita. They analyzed the results of 29 studies involving 813 schizophrenics and 718 controls. Those with schizophrenia showed high progressive reduction in cortical grey matter volume over time. The reduction was specific to discrete cortical areas in the frontal, temporal and parietal lobes. The researchers also found the underlying pathological process associated with this loss of grey matter appeared to be especially active in the first stages of the disease. This is consistent with the early onset of schizophrenia which is in the late teens to early 20s. This research supports the idea that reduced grey matter plays a role in schizophrenia. Finding neural correlates for schizophrenia is important because of the claim that early detection might prevent the development of the later stages of the disorder.